you finally gain the courage to use an airbrush, but it takes more than bravery to improve your skill. Questions like the consistency of your paint, what kind of airbrush you need, and how to gain airbrush control are all questions holding you back. Here are the tricks I wish someone would have told me when I started learning how to airbrush. This video is sponsored by Crippled God Foundry. There are two things to control your paint application, the distance to your subject and how far back you pull the trigger. When one of these variables changes, the other will have to change to follow suit if you want to continue a seamless application. Trigger. The trigger controls the amount of paint released from your gun. You very rarely will need to pull the trigger the entire way back. More than likely, you will end up somewhere within the first 60% of your trigger range. To apply paint to a specific location or to put down a lighter application of paint, you only want to release a very small amount of paint. Therefore, only placing light pressure on the trigger. Even if you want to paint a large area, pulling the trigger the whole way back would probably be a mistake. Releasing too much paint can cause the paint to splatter and spiderweb. Instead, you will apply a medium amount of pressure, again, somewhere around that 60% range, and apply multiple coats of your color. You will definitely want to learn how far back to pull the trigger before paint begins to be released from your gun. Practice applying paint off to the side. As you work to find that sweet spot where paint starts to be released from your gun, you might notice that the tip of your needle begins to dry more frequently than usual. That's because blowing air out the gun without blowing paint will cause your needle tip to dry up. This can be fixed with a few quick passes over the needle tip with a damp brush. If that doesn't work, check out this video here. Some guns have a stop on the back that allows you to set how far back the trigger can be pulled at a given time. With such a tool, you don't have to memorize the perfect angle for your trigger. You can instead set the stop and pull back the whole way. Distance. The distance you hold your gun from your model will affect the size of your spray pattern. Closer the gun is to your subject, the tighter the spray will be. The further back, the larger the spray pattern will be. This works hand in hand with trigger pull. The closer you are to the subject, the less paint you will want to release from your gun. Pulling the trigger too far back while being very close to your subject will cause the paint to flood and splatter. As you move away from your subject, you want to pull the trigger back further, releasing more paint. Practice. There are two skills to practice to master using an airbrush, cursive and shading. Writing your name in cursive helps you practice trigger pull, distance, and aim, as well as paint thinning and PSI. In general, to do close-up work like this, you will want to use thinner paint and a lower PSI. Shading will help you learn trigger control and aim. Draw a circle, either by hand or with your gun, and then practice shading that circle to look like a sphere. Basically, we want the lower right side to be in shadow or more opaque in color, circling up to a brighter white highlight on the upper left. We want the gradient between our light and dark to be as seamless as possible. Let's take a moment to talk about this week's sponsor, Crippled God Foundry. This week, I'm painting this fire sorceress bust from Crippled God Foundry's March release, Era of Forbidden Magic. In this month's release, you'll find 20 detailed miniatures, including various spellcasters, familiars, twisted arcane creatures, terrain, and spell effects to bring your tabletop experience to life. All of the models have dynamic and interesting poses, are gorgeously sculpted, and come pre-supported. This set also includes battle maps, paper miniatures, and monster stat blocks to help the era of forbidden magic begin at your table. If you like any of the models you've seen in this section or want to get access to Crippled God Foundry's future releases, be sure to check them out on Patreon or join tribes on my mini factory, link in my description box. All right, back to the video. Paintbrush or airbrush first. It seems like applying paint with an airbrush is the obvious first step, and for the most part, you are right but that isn't always the case. Mastering aim with an airbrush is quite the learning process and one I'm still going through. So when I need my colors to change at an exact location, or if applying the colors with an airbrush would be difficult and I would need very precise aim, I'll paint it by hand and blend it with an airbrush later. Once your layers are applied by hand, mix an in-between color and begin applying it between your two layers. Since we can apply very light passes with an airbrush, we can slowly begin to build up this middle color and hide that layer line with ease. Just start slow and apply gradually. Play with air pressure. 
In this and several other of my videos, I have listed my PSI to help you on your air painting journey. However, if my suggestion doesn't work, ignore it. Every airbrush and air compressor is different, even if you have the exact same make and brand as someone else. Maybe your hose has a kink in it, or the gaskets aren't as tight as they should be on your compressor. What matters more is that you learn to work with what you have, and that may require practicing with every paint mixture you create. Every time I create a new paint mixture, I test it off to the side before I apply it to my model. I would rather make any mistakes in my application on my cardboard and not on my model. But how do I know when it's right? We want there to be an even application of paint with very small particles. If the paint runs or spider webs, your PSI is too high, you're pulling the trigger too far back, or you're too close. If it looks chalky or dusty, your PSI is too high. If it sprays with large droplets of paint, your PSI is too low. Needle size. Have you ever been painting a larger area and thought, this is taking forever? Or maybe you're watching a tutorial online and asking, how in the world did they paint that tiny line? While it does absolutely involve skill, it may also come down to needle size. Many airbrushes come with the capability to change needle sizes. The smaller the needle, the less paint that is released. Smaller needles are great for tiny details like writing your name in cursive or spraying eyeshadow on a bust. This works the same way with larger needles. The larger the needle, the more paint that is released. So if you want to apply an even pass over terrain or vehicles, then a larger needle will be exactly what you need. And as a PS to that note, you really do need to make sure that you have the same needle and nozzle size. The fastest way to mess up your gun. The fastest way to mess up your gun is to try to remove the needle while there is still paint in your paint cup. The needle acts as a seal, preventing paint from entering parts of your gun it shouldn't. The first step to removing your needle is to first clean the paint cup. Next, add a small amount of airbrush cleaner, back blow the cleaning solution through your gun. To do this, clean the tip of your needle, pulling it back into the gun if need be, then block the majority of the air from escaping out the front, causing it to blow back into the cup and bubble. Dump out that cleaning solution and blow out the remainder through your gun. Then add in a bit more cleaning solution and begin to clean the part of your needle you can see through the cup. Again, pull it back further exposing yet to be scrubbed needle and do it again. Repeat this pattern until the needle has completely disappeared into the gun. Dump out whatever cleaning solution remains and pull the needle out. You may still pull back a little paint, but that is okay. If you pull back a lot like I did here, then break the gun down and do a thorough cleaning. All right, that's it from me. Thanks so much to Dicey D Hobbies for helping me print this model. If you like what I do, you know the drill. Patreon, subscribe, like, comment, check me out on Instagram. I hope you are doing wonderful and I'll see you next time.